Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is AES and welcome to my YouTube channel. When it comes to horror video games, there are three types of scares. First, there are tension-built frights, where the narrative or specific scene slowly turns a dial on your upcoming anxiety and does not let go until the intended fear is executed. A great example happens during SCP Containment Breach, where a doll-like figure constantly chases after you and you're expected to be terrified every time you blink. Secondly, there are effective jump scares, where a character jumps on you all of a sudden or a loud noise is played in the background, but they are both effective because they relate to what is happening around you or the story itself. An awesome instance of it can be seen in the original Fear, where the little girl perpetually haunts you by showing herself in unexpected scenarios. Lastly, there are ineffective jump scares, where a character or a loud noise arrives all of a sudden, but they have nothing to do with the tale and they are designed to simply infuriate you. If you're looking for a demonstration of this source of scares, play the evil inside. You will know what I mean. In today's video, I will cover 10 games that excel at executing one of the two types of scares. A couple of rules before we get started. On one hand, the following games are not ranked from the worst game to the best title. They are listed based on how well they manage to horrify me. On the other hand, the following compilation of games is, of course, subjective. You will notice that franchises such as Fatal Frame and Silent Hill won't be here because I've never played either of them. If you have a different tier-based list, share it in the comment section so we can discuss it. Without further ado, let's rank my top 10 horror video games of all time. Number 10, Until Dawn. Until Dawn resembles that scary film that you watch to be both anxious and amused. It tells the story of a group of friends who travel to a cabin in the woods and are chased by both humans and fictional creatures. It also stars a great cast of voiceover performers, with Hayden Panettiere and Rami Malek being the highlights of the roster. The game has its fair share of scary moments, from a Michael Myers-like individual roaming around the environment, to quick time events that may or may not result in your untimely death. Until Dawn is placed at the bottom of the list because it is not meant to be taken seriously. Nevertheless, it is one of the best narrative-focused games I've ever played, and one that is best played on or around Halloween. Number 9, Bioshock. You can certainly make a case about whether or not Bioshock is classified as a game in the discussed genre for today's video. There are many situations where your main task is using supernatural powers and guns to dispatch of human opponents and mechanical devices. However, I decided to place it on this list due to its atmospheric presentation. At the beginning, you travel by an airplane to an undisclosed location when it crashes into the ocean. When you survive and try to get your bearings by moving around, you are transported to an underwater city that is inhabited by big daddies, folks who are extremely violent, and leaders who exhibit discriminatory behavior. It is up to you to find out what is transpiring in Rapture and Escape. Despite its categorization as a first-person shooter prior to a representation in the horror genre, I was only scared for about a third or at most 50% of the time. Thankfully, the excellent establishment of the lore that is anything but happy-go-lucky is the reason as to why many people have and will name drop the original Bioshock while talking about scary tales. Number 8. Inside. If you ask me to summarize or tell you the gist of Inside's story, you will automatically stomp me and witness as I struggle. It may seem like I'm bashing the title, but it is its unknown nature when it comes to the narrative that increases the tension of this indie darling. You are immediately dropped into this bleak world as a young child, and the more you direct your character to the right side of the screen, the more of the world's population you encounter. It is weird and lacks a definitive plot, yet I was intrigued and thoroughly glued to the screen from start to finish, as I was on the lookout for obstacles and enemies that may lead to my death. Inside is similar to another title called Limbo, but I would not only say that the former is better than the latter, but also that I would recommend Inside more than Limbo as a horror-based experience. Number 7, Little Nightmares 2. The original Little Nightmares was a beautifully stylized video game that had several scary elements, but it was bugged down by pacing issues. As a result, my playthrough of it transformed from being tense to being frustrating. Little Nightmares 2 improved on every aspect of its predecessor, while also bringing the star of the first game to the sequel as a cooperative partner. In a similar fashion to Inside, you are not quite sure what is occurring for the majority of your experience. All you know is that the world is controlled by giant, terrifying creatures, and you must safely reach the end of each level. Fortunately, the plot's purpose is revealed in the end, and it is not only shocking, 
but it is also cool, since none of the main characters utter a word throughout your journey. Do you have to play the original Little Nightmares before playing the sequel? Not necessarily. It doesn't change the mortifying atmosphere. However, playing the first Little Nightmares before Little Nightmares 2 will only amp the tension as you reach the conclusion of 2021's scariest video game, as of the recording of this video. Number 6. P.T. P.T. had the potential to be at the top of this list. The illustrated story bits were interesting and encouraged you to constantly search for clues. The Groundhog Day style level design, while slowly adding new horror elements, was phenomenal. There are a few jump scares, but they are effective because the game often warns you ahead of time that you should be concerned about what is coming your way. The presentation, both visually and in terms of audio, is absolutely stellar. The unfortunate reality of PT is more depressing than the events that take place in the actual title. It is only an appetizer for the main course and the latter will never arrive due to behind the scenes disagreements between the video game's publisher, Konami, and the title's lead writer, Hideo Kojima. PT could have been one of, if not the scariest game of all time, but its current status as an unfinished product and an unavailable demo gives me no choice but to place it at the number 6 spot on this list. Number 5. Outlast There are games that do not get much attention until popular content creators showcase them to the world. Ninja did it for Fortnite, and Markiplier did it with Outlast, at least for me. Outlast was not on my radar, but I watched the beginning of a playthrough and I was immediately hooked. I bought it, played it, and had a blast with it. You are an investigative reporter who drives to an asylum for a project. Going to an asylum at night is not the best idea. You regret your decision shortly after your arrival, as you find yourself in a bloody location, literally, and one that is populated by killers and unnatural powers. Yes, most of the horror is displayed via jump scares, but they are delivered in a way that makes sense because of the use of the camcorder for lighting and the source of the jump scares, with the exception of the final act that is somewhat goofy. Outlast is the scariest indie video game that I've ever played, and I would certainly recommend it. Number 4, Dead Space 2. The first Dead Space game was released in 2008, and as far as I'm concerned, it became the standard that every scary title would strive to reach and overcome from that point onward. The atmosphere was horrifying, the necromorphs are creatures with whom you do not want to mess around, and the ending scared the heebie-jeebies out of me. Fast forward to 2011, and we received the sequel. It manages to be more terrifying, more character built, and simply better than the original in most aspects. There are less jump scares than the original, the enemy designs are creepier, and Isaac's mental battles with his ex-girlfriend Nicole eliminates any relief that you may gain from the slower paced moments of the title. After replaying Dead Space 2 a few days ago, I will admit that it has replaced Dead Space 1 on my list of the top 100 video games of all time and cements its spot on this list. There are three games that further increase the tension, but I can attest to the fact that Dead Space 2 is hard to beat when you consider Dead Space 2 as a video game as opposed to an experience that attempts to make you jump out of your seat. Number 3. Alien Isolation One of my favorite horror film franchises is Alien, which stars a creature called the Xenomorph and takes place thousands of miles away from Earth. Even though Aliens is my favorite movie in the series, the original Alien is the most effective trial to make you creeped out, whereas the sequel already established what is the monster and what does it look like. With that being said, I have always wanted a scary video game that is based on the IP. We are not going to talk about Aliens Colonial Marines in full detail. It is not worth your time and attention. Instead, we will briefly discuss the follow-up title that features the daughter of Ellen Ripley. Alien Isolation does away with the first-person shooting mechanics of Colonial Marines and focuses on an experience that is more akin to Amnesia the Dark Descent in a sense that you are trying to avoid a creature that you cannot kill. You eventually gain access to equipment that allows you to deter the Xenomorph, but it does not completely turn off the difficulty because the alien will relentlessly haunt you down with one of the best AI systems I have ever seen. The visuals and audio design are exceptional, exploration is very rewarding, and the robotic foes are slow but also remorseless. There is a good chunk of the game where the alien disappears and with it, most of the tension. Nonetheless, the powerful presence of the Xenomorph and its AI easily make it a contender for this list, and in this case, it receives the bronze medal. Number 2, Resident Evil 7 for the PlayStation VR. The Resident Evil franchise is traditionally a third-person survival experience 
where you solve puzzles, deal with limited inventory systems, and fight the undead. Many people were taken aback by the shift to a first person perspective, and some of them discredited the game for it. Prior to the release of Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 7 was my favorite entry in the series, and also one of the scariest games I've ever played. Dealing with the Baker family was nightmare inducing, and each member provided fresh gameplay mechanics and unique personalities. I was also pleased by the lack of jump scares and the atmosphere taking the lead with building your level of discomfort. The base version of Resident Evil 7 is creepy, but wrapping up a playthrough with virtual reality takes the scares to a whole other level. A lot of horror experiences on the PlayStation VR are cheap and should be advertised as tech demos. Resident Evil 7 gives you the option to play the entire game in VR and I was frequently stressed out, despite knowing what was coming next. Resident Evil 7 is a scary game while playing on the couch and staring at the TV, but it substantially improves when you wear the VR headset and immerse yourself in Ethan Winter's world. Number 1. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted Hold on, let me explain myself. Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the most overrated video game franchises of all time. Every title in the core series is practically the same, and the tension is based on my least favorite type of scare. Jump scares that have no basis in the narrative and are designed to anger you. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted follows the same tread. In that case, why is it at the top of my list? It is rather straightforward. It is the only horror game that I could not beat. If you join my single Twitch stream of Help Wanted, you may remember that I played it for about 20 minutes and stopped playing it because I was on the verge of experiencing a panic attack. I was aware of the mechanical monster's designs, but I was too scared to beat the game by the off chance that Bonnie or Foxy would decide to grace me with her presence. Since I was not able to complete the playthrough due to sheer horror, I cannot think of another pick for the scariest video game of all time on my list. Well folks, that's the end of the video, thank you very much for checking it out. Which video game scared you the most? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Till next time, have a great day or evening wherever you are. My name is AES, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.